Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I'm going to be painting Hoffman from the Hoffman core box set of the Malifaux miniatures board game. So this is Hoffman here, this is a really really cool sort of captain of uh, the Hoffman set and he's sort of part man and part mech so we're going to really get into this and make this into a really really cool fun and interesting little video. So I'm going to start by covering all of the metal parts in gunmetal. This is a really cool sort of dark dark uh, silver colour. Uh, which when we apply some washes and some tones and colors to it we'll be able to build this back up and use a really nice sort of true metal uh, color from uh, uh, like sort of the base of the mech and, and make this really sort of shiny and make it look really really awesome so I'm just going to take my time to try to be as careful as possible not to get this on Hoffman himself and just make sure that I base all of the metal parts and as you can see it has this really cool sort of uh, like I say this dark sort of uh, silvery metal tone it's a really great base color to begin with. From there then I'm going to use Brassy Brass and I'm going to use this just across some of the edges. So there's a few different edges across Hoffman's mech so we've got just a few bits just down and around the front as you can see um, and there's a few other little bits just dotted around so there's a little few circles around by the elbow joints, um, there's a little bit just across the, uh, the, the front of the knuckles on the hands and just a few bits like that. There's also an exhaust sticking out of the back that we're going to do and it's just about trying to break up all of this metal because there's so much silver on this model which is going to paint this a uh, little brass color just to kind of separate and break up some of the colors and just give us a little bit of something else to look at now I've taken a look as much as I can into sort of the box art of this character and I'm trying to keep this character as close to the box art as I can uh, but also having my own little twist on it as well so just making it slightly slightly different in terms of some of the colors uh, but all in all it's going to be very very similar to the way that it looks on the box so as I, as I said as you can see just painting this brass around uh, so the exhaust area here and just trying to be careful not to get this brass color on any of the silver that we've already painted now from there I'm going to use a US olive drab and for this we're going to paint the trousers. So we're just going to paint just across the bottom area and base coat all of these trousers. This is going to give us a really nice military green tone. So this is going to give us a really nice uh, base colour that will darken down quite nicely that we will be able to uh, boost the vibrance up um, quite, quite simply a little bit later on. This is a really, really good base green colour. I really, really like US olive drab. This is a brilliant middle of the road colour to paint and this particular paint from Vallejo has a really good matte effect when it uh, dries down as well which gives us a, a really nice colour to work with and work from. So again just trying to be careful not to get this on any of the colours we've already painted and then once that's dry we're going to move on and just use black so you can use any kind of black that you like again I'm sticking with a lot of Vallejo colors on this particular model and that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to be as careful as I can using the very tip of the brush just to paint his little waistcoat because Hoffman has a waistcoat just uh, around uh, the straps of his uh, backpack to the mech here because he's got a few straps and a few leather straps but there's also this little black sort of waistcoat and it just pokes out underneath his arms here and it it just also sticks out just around the uh, the strap area there the leather straps as you can see once that's done then we're going to use ghost gray and ghost gray I'm going to use to paint the shirt so this is the base color for his shirt now if you've seen me painting a lot of different models before you'll know that when it comes to painting things like white it's always good to paint it with a little bit of a gray tone to begin with because that gives us something to build the white up from you don't want to start with white because once you apply sort of a wash or anything like that it leaves you with nothing to sort of um, highlight so starting with something like a ghost gray which is a really nice sort of light tone sort of uh, very very subtle kind of bluish grey that gives us something that we can tone down but then also build back up with a really nice vibrant white colour uh, for the shirt once that's dry, we're then going to move on and use beige red, which is my tried and, and tested, my most trusted way of painting sort of skin tones. And I'm just going to paint this across the arms and the face and things like that. Now, the reason why I've waited this long to do the skin is because normally when it comes to painting, I find it easier to paint from inside to out. So we're going to paint the harder to reach areas first and then build our way out of the model. If you painted the skin first, then you'd be a little bit too cautious about where we paint in the shirt and you'd be worried about making mistakes. So it's easier to paint the shirt first and then build outwards towards the skin uh, sort of as one of the last sort of stages. And as I say, it's all about just trying to be as careful as possible and building it from the inside to out so that it gives you a nice 
easy way of building those base colors up and those tones up as well. We don't want to worry too much about the mistakes that we could make. We want to paint and have fun. So once that's dry, I'm going to use a small amount of dark Prussian blue. And this I'm just going to paint across the, uh, the little fire area here. So this is looking to be very much like a really bright sort of blue, like almost like a, a, a welder color. So this, this kind of sort of arc welder or something like that. So we're going to base this using this dark Prussian blue. And then we're going to build up to a nice light blue tone a little bit later. Uh, so yeah, instead of just going direct with flames or fire, we're painting this in a blue tone. And again, that's just to match the color that you see on the box. Once that's dry, I'm moving on to one of my favorite colors, which is the Dark Rust. This is uh, from Vallejo. This is the Panzer Aces color, and this is a really nice dark, dark color. Uh, this is a really brilliant uh, base coat. So this I tend to find that I use to base a lot of different things from skin tones all the way through to leathers, belts and all things like that. This is a fantastic base color and one of my all to uh, one of my uh, go to all time favorite colors. So I'm just going to paint all of the straps with this. So as I said, he's got the straps just across uh, his shoulders, but also he's got his belt buckle. And there's also these two belt straps here as well, holding his legs into the mech suit, just like so. I'm also going to be very, very careful and just apply that across the goggles going around his head as well. Once everything is dry, then we're just going to use a subtle uh, layer of soft tone. Uh, strong tone, sorry, we're going to use a subtle layer of strong tone from the army painter and the strong tone is a great sort of uh, brown kind of earth tone wash and this color is great for tying all of those colors together and it's going to tie the entire model together as well because as we apply this we're going to get all of those colors um, to, to, to sort of tie together and become a little bit more unified with this um, wash and this is going to allow us then uh, when we paint these colors back up and paint the vibrancy back up to just get all of this tone and color and, and sort of earthy transition to just show through in a nice even fashion. Once that's dry, I'm also going to add just on the metal, so just on the steel areas, I'm just going to add a nice thin layer of blue tone as well. With steel colors and things like that and, and, and metals, sometimes adding a little bit of blue into that silver does create that little bit of extra character, that little bit of extra tone and a very subtle sort of color um, that almost catches the eye in very, very subtle, uh, very, very light ways as well. So this is a really, really good uh, tip when you paint in sort of silvers and metals. A little bit of blue sometimes allows that to stand out quite quite nicely. Now once all of that is dry, we're then going to start by doing the messier part first. So we're going to dry brush that gun metal back on. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use a much smaller brush than I would normally use for dry brushing. And this is just so that we can control this just on the metal areas. Because of course we don't want to dry brush onto the shirt, the trousers, the face and all things like that. So I'm going to try to be as careful as I can not to get this on any of the other colors. And I'm also going to dry brush in very, very small increments. So I'm not going to dry brush too much of the model and it's always about less is more so again if you've watched me painting before you'll know when I say less is more that means we put less paint on the brush so that we can build this up in more and more layers rather than one big splodge at a time once the, the, the uh, gun metal has dried we're then just going to use the silver color and we're going to do the same thing we're going to be a little bit more specific about where we dry brush this but again less is more so less paint on the brush and we're going to build this up in very very small increments from there then I'm also going to use the silver from model color so the one that we used earlier was from game color now we're going to use the model color silver and this one is very very vibrant so this has a lot of pigmentation for uh, creating a lot of shine and a lot of silver so this one we're going to be very very specific and only really dry brush this on the very very tips and the very very edges things like the big pauldrons here the kneecaps and things like that just to kind of get uh, the, the the light to sort of stand out and stand off certain parts where we want the light to really really catch and shine once all of that is dry we're going to go back to that brassy brass and this time instead of dry brushing we're going to use our normal size zero brush that i use a lot of in my videos and with this one as you can see i'm just going to use a very small sort of stippling effect this this sort of stippling motion just going to dab the tip of the brush along while i paint and that's going to create a, a texture and a character to this metal as well so it's not going to be too smooth it's not going to be too brilliant it's not going to be too bright and perfect instead this is going to have a texture and 
little bit of a worn effect onto the metals as well. And we're going to paint this back around all of those areas that we've got the brass, but it doesn't matter if we lose or leave out certain areas where the wash has sat. Um, so in some of the, the little areas, as you can see just on the knuckles there, there's one or two little uh, small rivet holes where we can allow the sort of darker wash to sit and uh, uh, sort of apply its contrast then. And then we're just going to go back around all of those areas, like I say, just using that stippling emotion and just building that colour back up and fixing anything that we've uh, dry brushed over. From there, then I'm going to use Brassy Brass and Polish Gold in 50-50 increments, so just one spot of each. And again, just using that stippling motion, we're going to be a little bit more careful as to where we place this. And we're just going to try to build up that vibrancy across the front, just like so. And again, it's all about just creating that texture by using that stippling effect. And that's going to give us a really, really cool look uh, and a really cool overall sort of feel to the model as well. And it's not going to look too perfect. It's going to look a little bit worn and a little bit uh, more... Uh, battered and things like that which is exactly what we want we don't want everything to look perfect and brand new and lovely we want things to be a little bit more beaten up as well once that's done going back to the trousers we're going to use the us olive drab again and using our size zero brush we're going to do some serious detail work now on the miniature and we're just going to follow along all of those creased lines as you can see i'm just picking out all of the areas where the creases are leaving the wash sat in the recess points in all of those uh, darker areas allowing as to build that contrast really really nicely through the trousers in such a quick and easy way as you can see just using that that that, that very tip of the brush and those brush strokes to really build that character and follow along um, with the sort of uh, the, the character and the lines of the model itself so we follow in the way that the lot the, the model itself has been built just like so from there then i'm going to use half and half again so 50 50 so one blob of us olive drab and one blob of bone white and this will give us a really nice sort of step up towards a, a nice highlight onto the model i'm going to add a little bit of water into this so that this moves onto the miniature in a really nice uh, really nice smooth fashion and as you can see we're just going to start to build up a little bit more of a highlight then across all of those creases and all of those uh, raised areas just like so you can really see that it's starting to pop down those trousers are really starting to stand out in such a nice quick and easy way you see how quick this model is sort of coming together and how easy it's been to sort of build up something that, that at first glance might look a little bit more um, sort of difficult to do or a little bit menacing or something. You know, you might look at this and think, oh, there's a lot of different areas to paint on this. It could be quite difficult. And the more that we build in, you can see how easily we go in ahead and, and build in these layers and getting this character to really sort of pop out of uh, the miniature as well. So once that's all dry, we're going to move on to the ghost grey. Uh, for this one then, we're going to do the same thing as what we've just done with the trousers, and using our size zero brush, which is going to pick out the details now across the shirt. So again, I'm using uh, just brush strokes going across the shirt, just like so, and I'm purposefully leaving a few little gaps and a few little creases here as well. And again, that's just about building texture and character so that not everything is just one flat color. This gives us a little bit more uh, texture, a little bit more character, and a little bit more to look at. When you see the model, it doesn't look like one flat color. It looks like it's got a few creases or a few folds or a few things like that going on on the shirt as well and that's exactly what we're trying to do we're kind of making character to something in a very quick and easy fashion something that really stands out and looks amazing on the tabletop but something that we can paint in a nice quick easy way so as you can see just using that sketch in motion with the brush and just using the very tip of the brush just to build those tones and those colors and that vibrancy back up as well I love painting white for this reason is because once you start with a nice light gray like so and you start to build through uh, the, the contrast it really really does look amazing from there then I'm going to use ghost gray and dead white and once again we're going to use a 50 50 so half and half making things very very simple so this is just uh, one blob of each and a little bit of water so that this allows the the paint to really run off the brush and then we're going to do exactly the same thing which is going to build up the highlights and areas where we want to highlight so again you can see i'm painting across the chest just leaving some of those areas where uh, those little uh, sort of brush strokes are so that we create that illusion of folds and creases in the shirt and we're doing the same thing just down the arms as well just painting along the raised areas 
Once that's dry, then we're going to use the Leather Brown from AK Interactive. And for this, I'm just going to use the um, very tip of the brush once more, and we're going to build up all of those leather straps. So if you've seen me painting leathers before, I use a lot of the AK Interactive paints for these, uh, but you could always use uh, the Dark Rust and then a Leather Brown from Vallejo and build up that way, and that would work equally as well. But for this one, I'm using uh, my favorite way to go, and that is the AK Interactive Leather Brown. And I'm just going to pick out all of the details of those uh, leather straps like so and then once that's done I'm gonna go with half and half leather brown and deep brown deep brown is a very intense vibrant color so when you add this into the leather brown this really does add a really nice uh, bright vibrant sort of boost to it so we're gonna try to pick off just the top parts or just the mostly the top areas of the belts now so that this gives us this really nice uh, vibrant color shine to it and we're just going to be as careful as we can not to get this on any of the other areas and then using the stippling effect i'm going to stipple this just down the leather straps going from his shoulders just to create again just a little bit of texture and a little bit of uh sort of the illusion of creases or scratches or scrapes and once that's done then i'm going to use the deep brown just on its own and as you can see i'm just now picking out the very top edges and that's just creating an illusion of the light catching the very top area of the leathers just like so this is a really cool, again, very quick and easy way of painting leather that looks fantastic. It really does allow the leathers to pop off the miniature and really stand out and look incredible. And again, across the shouldered straps, I'm just gonna paint this using the nice stippling effect and creating that illusion of scratches and scrapes and the illusion that the, the leather is quite worn out and well beaten, just like so. And there you go, once that's done then, we're gonna move on to a German gray, so back to the model color from Vallejo. And um, for the German gray, we're just gonna paint this now onto his little waistcoat. So we're not gonna keep the waistcoat all black. We're gonna use this German gray, which has got this very, very subtle sort of dark blue tinge to it. And this is gonna give us a little bit more of a slight color boost. And then of course, being a slightly more blue gray, this is gonna tie into that very, very slight and light color transition that we've got with our blue wash in that steel, in that silver sort of effect as well. Tying some of our colors together and creating a really nice pleasing to look at uh, miniature and there we go once that part is dry we're going to move into using the beige red and i'm not going to spend ages painting the or showing you guys how to paint the skin because i've got quite a few different videos on here showing you guys how i paint skin um, and and pretty much skin is something that i paint in in the majority of my videos so just going to do this a little bit quicker on this video today than normal but just using the beige red at first and we're just going to build up a few of the uh, the base colors and if you make any mistakes just like i have done here you can always just use a dry brush to uh, pull some of that paint back out and that's all i'm doing now is just following along as you can see i'm going to leave a small gap across the forearm here and again just like we did with the shirt it's just about creating the illusion that there are folds or creases or a little bit of muscle tone and definition in the skin and that's the cool thing by using the wash is it allows us to build back up to the base tone and then it gives us the opportunity to also add our own little bit of character and build a little bit of character through uh, these extra little creases and folds and areas where we don't actually place uh, the paints as well. So it gives us the, the, the real complete freedom to kind of make our own little assumptions and build our own little characters and our own little details into the model as well. Just trying to be as careful as I possibly can around the face as well because some of the details are quite difficult to get to and then once that is dry we're going to use the beige red and the basic skin tone again half and half so just one blob of each and uh, for this one we're just going to slowly build that tone back up and like i said just using uh, a few stippling uh, effects and just trying to leave a little bit of a, a a gap here and there just to create that illusion of muscle tone and texture and definition and just giving us the idea that the light is is just sort of um the light is just sort of catching on certain parts so just across the knuckles the hand and things like that and again we'll do the same thing with the face just across the nose the chin the cheekbones and all these different things 
And the cool thing is, by adding a small amount of water into this, this gives us complete control over painting where this goes, and then as it dries down, it dries into a very nice, smooth transition onto the model as well, um, which is exactly what you want to do. You kind of want this to be pleasing on the eye. You don't want it to be too extreme or, or the highlights to be so extreme that they stand out too much. You kind of want it to be a really nice sort of uh, smooth blend and transition onto the model as well. So a little bit of water in your paint, it goes a long, long way in terms of allowing the paints to sort of blend together and, and blur together into a really nice, nice uh, color. From there then we're going to use basic skin tone on its own. This time I'm adding quite a bit of water into it so creating this into almost like a glaze rather than a paint and then I'm going to be very 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 specific about where this is placed just across the arm just across the knuckles and areas like so. So as I say, just by being very careful about where we place this, we're going to get some really extreme highlights. So we get to completely control where the highlights are going to go. So as you can see, just across the very edge of the nose, again, those uh, those cheekbones and, and chin. And of course, across the top part of his head where he has no hair and those knuckles and a little bit around the wrists and things like that are also going to benefit from having a little bit of this painted just across those areas. Once that's dry then, we're going to move on and use electric blue. And this electric blue, I'm going to paint just across the little flame that we've got here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try to pick out some of those uh, details. So some of the areas where uh, the flame is closer to the brass. So we don't want to paint this all the way up. So we kind of want to paint this a little bit closer to where the brass is. Now, you could dry brush this if you want. That's absolutely fine. There's no right or, ro or wrong way to sort of paint miniatures as such if you prefer to dry brush dry brush this part that is completely up to you um, I'm just trying to pick out some of the details using the brush um, and then we're going to go and build this up in uh, a little bit more of a level so we're going to once that's dry use pastel blue from Vallejo and this time we're going to paint this a little bit closer to the brass again so we're trying to keep the lighter area closer to the base of the flame because normally when you're painting flames the warmest and the hottest part is closer to the bottom so once you reach some of the uh, the extended or the further away parts of the flame they want to be dark because they aren't as as hot as the areas closer to the brass so that's why I'm trying to be a little bit more careful about where I place this and trying to get this closer to the brass once that's done we're gonna move just onto dead white and just using a very very small amount of that dead white again just painting this very very close to the brass very very close to the edge here and again that's all about building up that heat that heat source and how bright and vibrant the and, and hot this is just around that area I apologize that it is a little bit out of focus it is very very difficult uh, to have caught that on camera once that's done I'm gonna also use a very small amount of the electric blue this is um, an optional layer so this is something that you can do if you want but you don't have to do and that's all I'm doing again using that less is more technique I'm just gonna very 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 lightly dry brush some of this electric blue around the hand as well just to kind of give this a very basic basic easy to do um, OSL so a, a direction of light coming off that flame once that's done, I'm also then going to go back to the Dark Rust 302 and you want to be very, very careful with this as to where you place it. And I'm using a uh, basing brush so you can see my brush is really broken apart and really sort of worn. And that's all I'm trying to do is dab this just across the exhaust so that this gives the exhaust a little bit of a worn out sort of look so that it doesn't look perfect and pristine. Being an exhaust pipe, it should be quite uh, covered in soot and muck and dirt and all these different things. So I'm just trying to be as careful as I can and trying to dab this across that exhaust. I'm going back to my dead white because this is one of my go-to colors. This is a fantastic color. And again, this is a optional stage. So you don't have to do this if you're happy with the way that it looks. Um, and you guys can let me know in the comments below whether or not you think this is a cool um, addition or whether it looked better before. That's completely up to you. Like I say, they are miniatures. You can paint them however you want. But using the dead white, that's all I'm doing is adding a little bit of water so that this moves and manipulates on the brush that little bit easier as you can see nice and smooth and I'm gonna paint this into the grooves and the reason why I'm placing white into the grooves first is because we're gonna paint almost like a light source so we're gonna paint something that looks a little bit kind of like plasma or like a light source just into uh, these grooves and by adding a little bit of color in here this is gonna create a little bit of a light up kind of effect almost as if that is the power source 
Once that's dry, I'm going to use a math blue uh, from scale 75. Now, you don't have to use the scale 75 paints. You could always stick with the electric blue that we used originally. But with the math blue, this paint, dry, uh, this paint is really, really good for um, thinning down. This paint does become a very good sort of glaze. So I've added a little bit of water to this so you can see that it moves into the miniature in a nice, easy way. And then once it's sat in the miniature, I'm just taking a dry brush, a dry small brush, and I'm using that brush then just to take some of the paint out of the middle, just like so. And that gives us the illusion that there's a little bit of light source and color coming out from uh, the edges, but the highlight and the lightest area and the lightest point is just there in the center where that white point is. And then just to create that OSL, that directional light again, that's all I'm doing is very, very lightly using that Amarth Blue and just dry brushing a little bit across uh, the sides of the legs just here. Again, these are all optional stages. You don't have to do these. Um, but I'm just doing it for this particular model just to kind of give it a little bit more character and kind of make it a little bit uh, cooler and a little bit more vibrant when it's on the board. And all in all, once everything is done and everything is painted, uh, your Hoffman should look something like this. Like I say, you can choose whether or not to add the blue bits into the vents and things like that. That is completely up to you. You have to let me know in the comments below what you think of this painting, whether you think it is true to the box art and whether you like my additional extras with my OSL bits and things like that. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think of this one. As always, my friends, uh, I thank you so, so much for everything that you've done on this channel. Your comments, your likes, your support, your shares, everything you do uh, makes a massive, massive difference to me. I'm just a, a humble little painter that likes to paint miniatures. So everything that you do, um, it, it honestly, it, it, I'm lost for words on times as to, to how, how thankful I am for everything that you guys do. So uh, as always, please take care of yourselves and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, my friends.